What one stands for doesn't really matter. What matters is that they stand for something. This is something I believe in my heart of hearts. I've often been called a perfectionist and for good reason. I envy those who can't take it easy, who consider politics a life or death struggle. When George Friedman laughs about how he's so glad the US can invade other countries, but can't be invaded, a rage overcomes me as if my own child had been slaughtered right in front of me. I see my dead family members in every person with a heart condition or severe anxiety, including, in a horrible twist of irony, my closest friends in the world. Every single day I think about the lives that could have been saved if we had just gotten our shit together as a species, and how many more will continue to be lost. In short, the feelings of envy and sadness that I have, my core desire in life is to avoid loss and separation bubbles up and transforms into anger, anger that I throw at my political enemies. And yet it's strange because had it not been for that original sentiment that I heard three years ago in a My Hero Academia analysis video, I too would have just sat on the sidelines waving my Venus Project flag in vain as I slowly lost everything I cared about to the inertia. This all being an extremely long way of saying, I am a conflicted hypocrite, at least at heart. You need not be persuaded by my pathos appeal, nor can I say that I'm writing this without a hint of self-interest. I certainly need your help more than you'll need mine. Just as rebellions are built off hope, politics is based around identity and empathy. So if you can find it in your heart to stay just a little longer, maybe, just maybe I can convince you on why you should be a leftist. Human beings are not but clumps of desire, and logic dictates that a world filled with them will decline. This is a fundamental belief of mine, but we who serve progress are given cessation to those desires and needs if only the edge of them, any and all other choices with time. Those like Jordan Peterson and George Friedman are puppets dancing to their sinful appetites. They do not actually do anything to show their free will through rebellion to the progress of history. Every decision can be traced back to the previous non-choices and to non-choices before that. The desire to clean your room isn't itself a choice, but rather the decision to overcome your own deficiencies because those deficiencies became too much for your subconscious to bear. In the modern day, you will not take the consequences of being fired for not showing up to work to demonstrate a free will, and you are not about to hike into the forest and live like a wild man because civilization has won out. Even if you were an expert survivalist, there are few places to go, and those are shrinking as capitalism separates us from nature more and more. Many of you have already associated civilization with speed and acceptability thanks to the marketing of others. Such a thing is a matter of expediency, I'm sure. You find it meaningless to try something new as it will fail the same as a quiet life away from the world. Even when you try something new, it is because you have hit some marker in your subconscious that states you are tired of the same old. And as such, the choice to choose differently was already made. What leftism offers you, I would argue, is to finally give actual meaning to that choice. Day-to-day -day living shows nothing that could be interpreted as meaningful. Of this, I am convinced. Having a job is tantamount to pushing a boulder up a hill, waiting for it to roll back down. It's fine if you enjoy it, but can we really imagine Sisyphus happy when other options exist? You might counter, but he did not make such, and such a choice, but another. The choice to not make a choice is not a part of free will in your day-to-day -day life. The only time man makes a real choice beyond mundane life is when they tap into the Buddhist ideal of right action. She might be the one to give to charity, he might have given a bigger tip out of pity, or because the worker chose to be better than an automaton in his job, they might give an encouraging word instead of looking in Word. One might choose enlightenment. When you embrace the progress of history, the game changes from 3D to 4D chess. One is not threatened by what happens above or below the earth, or indeed whatever happens in the boundless universe. For now, you are not choosing along a 
line of despair, but rather the choice of the sublime and hope or the subterranean and nihilistic. Consider, if you will, socialism with computers, the leading advocate being one Paul Cockshot. Here we have a mathematical guide to a better society not something merely couched in sentiments of private property, which in itself is an oxymoronic statement. While personal property is quite real, the idea that food can be hoarded while people starve for no other reason than some vague concept of rights invented by slaveholders is not only absurd but bafflingly ineffective. Will we die from global warming because Elon Musk wishes to start a Mars colony? Will we really starve? and abuse people so that Jeff Bezos can get more money? Will we shed tears for Margaret Thatcher of all people? No, I say. Man can choose either his higher or lower nature. When one chooses to embrace leftism, gluttony may now be thought of as being more than a way to ruin your good figure. Lying does more than hurt society and your relations with it. Greed is more than hoarding. Each of those things separates us from our mission, what we're here to do. Consider Hillary Clinton. Her foundation has crumbled. Her dreams are crushed. They're putting up her daughter as if she even had half the ruthlessness her mother had. Now consider Bernie Sanders. Even if everything is rigged against him once again, he has had a real impact beyond his mortal life. His policies will affect and inspire generations. His platform has been adopted on some level by all of his opponents. He has already won because that's what a win means to him. How many socialists and others have been reinforced in spirit by the populist who came before? They have gained eternal rewards that shall not pass away from collective human record unless all reality is wiped clean, and not one scrap of their sermons, songs, or works remain. The difference is one of scales and one of wills. A conservative will be just that, another gear in the machine that entropy will eventually degrade, their memory forgotten, their horrors effaced. Only through leftism shall new blood walk and flourish, blood that will never run dry. This world doesn't belong to you or the people who came before. It belongs to someone who is yet to come. So going back to what I said before, it doesn't matter what you stand for. What matters is that you stand for something, and it is because such that is the case that it behooves you to choose the immortal, the future, because that choice is what will count as your future becomes their immortal past. That's why you should become a leftist.